very short-lived little expedition. It's not over yet. I know I've got to get in. But uh, I'm sitting just to 40 knots and uh, <laughs> Beverly and I have decided that 30 is our top level of what we can cope with. Uh, so 40 is way above our comfort zone. You're only seeing six, four, six, gusting seven. Yeah, exactly. So very short trip, but I can see white caps in the bay and we've just gone out and we're going back in again. Sometimes we say what difference an hour makes or what a difference a day makes, but what a difference half a mile makes. We're back in. Uh, the forecast has got worse, as we find out. <laughs> Basically, Area 13, uh, which is where we're going to sail into, was fine, but by the 12 o'clock forecast it had um, a red line around it. Which usually means small craft warnings, which usually means it's not a good day to be running around the place. Um, also, this area had got a small crap warning as well, whereas previously it didn't. You know, this is just in the 12 o'clock forecast. Mm. And now, it's all clearing up, it's beginning to look beautiful and you wonder, should we go out? You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. But um, the problem is, um, you're very sheltered. You know, here, you've got lots of um, things to shelter you. Whereas out there you've got nothing. Were we just unlucky? Did we just hit a squall? I've no idea, but I am calming at least. But the thing is, if we still go out later on, we'll, you know, it's the same price because it's only the night that you're having to pay, pay for. Oh, yeah, so as long as we leave before sunset. Mm -hmm. mm. But I have to say that Royal St George have been absolutely wonderful. We came back in, explained the situation. They were brilliant about it they were absolutely they were very very helpful um you know they so I, I can't i can't praise them enough no i mean so you know it's just nice to have it's one of the things um you know being part of a club even though we're not part of the royal saint george club that if you are in the club network it really helps because mm. i know as a um, member of liverpool yacht club when we were members of that we managed to get various things just because we were members of a club. Mm. So, you know, it does help and it is a great way of introducing yourself to sailing because they have classes and they have courses and they have mm. they have stuff to help you and move you on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can join a club then that's a great way to start sailing. That's all true, but what I really want to say in this piece of camera okay. is Maybe we shouldn't attempt to go to sea in days where there's a lot of red areas in the forecast. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't red when we started. Mm. It was just the 12 o'clock forecast, so, mm -hmm. you know... And by then, we were in the middle of prepping the boat when that forecast came out. No, so we did uh, maybe I should have looked. Mm -hmm. I should have looked before we actually cast off the lines, but I didn't. But I'll be honest, even looking out there now, it looks okay. I know. I, I don't know if it is. I know, but... Out there and I look so different from what we experienced as little as half an hour ago. Mm. 
just something we've just been discussing and uh, <laughs> I thought I'd just put it on camera. Um, it doesn't auger well for the jet. Uh, it doesn't auger well for your journey <laughs> when you've got to start with only one sail out and that sail set the two reefs. <laughs> and that's the start of your journey. And you're still doing four and a half of knots. knots. <laughs> and there's white caps everywhere. No. It's not necessarily a good omen. No. Well, we're still in Royal St George's in Dunleary uh, after yesterday's day battle <laughs> where we got absolutely hammered outside. Uh, we've been looking at the forecasts and the forecasts are not promising. Um, that's not strictly true. In about three days time they're extremely promising but for the next two or three days they are very very bad. The very short term forecast which only goes ahead about 36 hours uh, is usually the most accurate on predict wind and it is basically saying that the wind will start from over our stern it will then come inland behind me round over the town and then eventually stop uh, at the building in front of us now the Aromi forecast one resolute one kilometer resolution is very accurate generally speaking predict wind says that when it compares observations to actual uh, to predictions this is the one to go for so We've based it on that and what we've done is we've moved the boat right into this corner of the pontoon where we should get the maximum amount of shelter from the wind. It's only really open to a, a complete northerly and we've closed as much of the northerly slot off as we can by moving the boat as tight as we can to the end of this pontoon. So we're hoping that we're basically pretty well sheltered. The wind should be um, an offshore wind. It should, it should be blowing us off out toward the um, the general harbour area so we'll not be getting squished against the pontoon with a bit of luck. It's meant to be fairly calm overnight as the eye of the storm passes over us but tomorrow afternoon it's meant to be a bit lumpy and rough but hopefully from the building in front of us. So uh, that's the plan. With a bit of luck it'll all come off. Well you did a marvellous job Bev. We both did. I'm not taking all the credit. If it wasn't for your calm thinking, I probably wouldn't have done as well as I did. You know, Gainer uh, had me doing um, a reverse spring. It didn't help a great deal, but you know what? In conditions like these, you take everything you can get, and we needed everything we could get. A lot of our lines are still back in Royal St George. Um, stuff was just abandoned on the pontoon. The lads at Royal St George helped us off as best they could, pushed the nose out as best they could. Um, the people running the um, cruise line ferry things in and out they were marvelous as well everybody's been bloody marvelous it's been fantastic so what so what so all this help but what have we actually done oh we've moved about a quarter of a mile um we've moved from one side of Dunleary marina to the other side of Dunleary marina um the side we were on was the exposed side and the forecast was supposed to come from the west and is now coming from the northeast so as usual another triumph for the technology of weather forecasting um, uh, and it's, um, according to XC, it's going to be north all day today. I don't care where it goes, we're in. Um, I really don't give a damn about what happens at this point. We're in, I'm going to have my coffees on, I'm going to snuggle down. I've got to go back to Ross and George, pay any bills that we have owing there, uh, collect our lines and things, sort things out here. But we're in, and it's bloody awful outside. Well... <laughs> This is where we were this morning, just over here. Um, you can see all the little boats over there that are bouncing up and down. You can see the dinghies going mad. But they've closed the pier off now. They've made it so that nobody should go on to it because it is bouncing like a cork out there. We've come back and we've recovered our lines. So now we're going to go back to Dunleary and just take it easy. We've got a few little tasks to do like showers and laundry. We're going to get them done today. But frankly, I think what we're really going to do is just sit on our backsides and relax because after this morning's adventures, I think we need to relax. Um, how's head? Just, just wipe your finger over the lens. No, just wipe your finger over it, just your thumb. There. As you can see on the camera, it, uh, <laughs> it's blowing rain sideways. Um, there's a couple of dinghy sailors out. Personally, I think they're mad, but you know, what the hell, they're having fun. But we're going to go back now and relax because this is not on. So what's just happened, Gainer? 
oh, somebody knows me well. <laughs> so I've just received a uh, bottle of Chianti. Um, so, um, you know, because we always love seeing subscribers. We're never going to do one of these meet us kind of things. But if you do ever want to come down to the boat, just follow us on AIS. Um, and we always love having you aboard. We've got some subscribers later having a bit of a nosh. And we're feeding them. And we're feeding them. So, you know, uh, whereas this is just <laughs> a bottle of wine to say thanks for all our videos. So a big thank you to Len and his friend. That's right. Big thank you to Len and his friend. So we ignored the unsettled weather and partied the night away with fellow YouTubers Linda and Ryan and a good time was had by all.